Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Let's dive in to the story of First Rat. For generations, the rats in the old junkyard have been telling each other the great legend about a moon made out of cheese, and they want nothing more than to reach this inexhaustible treasure one day. But how was that supposed to be done? One day, the little rat children discovered a comic in the junkyard that describes the first landing on the moon, and thus the plan was born. Build a rocket and take over the cheese moon. Fortunately, the junkyard has everything the rats need to build their rocket, and the other animals are willing to support this daring venture. At least, if they're well paid. Of course, all the rats work together to achieve this mighty goal. However, each rat family competes to build the most rocket parts and to train the most ratronauts so they can feast on as much of the lunar cheese as possible. First Rat is a rocket building game for one to five players. Let's first look at how to set up the game. You're gonna wanna place the standard side of the game board face up. This is gonna be your play area. There are two sides to this board, which really allows for amazing replayability. But to get started, let's stay on the standard side. There's a lot of components in this game. So for step two, we're gonna wanna place all the building materials where everyone can reach them. You're gonna find vinegar bottles, baking soda, tin cans, calculators, awards, cheese, moldy cheese. Again, all of this just needs to be within player's reach. Depending on how many people are playing, next you're gonna wanna choose your rat team color. Go ahead and place eight of the 10 score markers in front of you and keep the remaining two markers aside for now. Eight is a special number with these score markers because that actually initiates the end of the game. But we'll keep the two aside because you can always score more points depending on how the game ends, utilizing these last two score markers down the road. Make sure you also take one player aid, place it in front of you. Now we're gonna put our rats on the board. You're gonna to wanna to put two of your rats in the start space on the junkyard path. Two of your rats will go in the nursery, which is down in the bottom of the board in the rat burrow. Next, you're gonna to wanna to place your rat burrow marker in the start space on the rat burrow path. Place your light string marker in the start space on the light string. Next, you're gonna to wanna to shuffle all 10 bottle caps face down. Go ahead and turn six of them face up and place them side by side in the Mad Cap Crows booth. Next, we're gonna set up Sippy the Frog's booth. Depending on how many players are playing depends on how many bottles you put out. For this two player game I'm setting up, let's go ahead and just put out the three energy drinks. These can go face up as they're all the same. And you can return the rest of the energy drinks back to the box. Now we're gonna work on Harry Hamster's booth. Harry Hamster has backpacks that he is selling, so we're gonna take 10 of these backpacks and mix them together face down. Again, depending on player count, that will dictate how many backpacks you put out. So for this two-player game, we're gonna put out five backpacks. Then you can return the rest of the backpacks back to the box. These backpacks can go face up as well. Now we're gonna head down to the rat burrow and we're gonna lay out some comics. We read about these comics in our flavor text and this was kind of the information the rats used to figure out how to get to the moon. We're gonna set this up with a first game scenario and in order to do this, we're gonna remove all the super rats. These are the ones that kind of have a yellow background. So go ahead and remove those. So the remaining six that we have after we have removed the super rats will go face up in the library section on the right side of the rat burrow. Now you can decide who goes first. Now, the rules say that whoever ate cheese last could go first, but I'll leave that up to you. Once you decide who's going first, they're gonna take the start rat marker as well as one cheese. The second and third player will take two cheese each, and the fourth and fifth players will take three cheese. 
At this point, each player is going to have some cheese, they're gonna have their score markers, they're gonna have their player aid all in front of them. And this tableau is gonna begin to build as we acquire more resources, so make sure you have enough room. The last thing we need to set up are score tracks. So on the score tracks, you are gonna see some spaces with kind of a stop sign symbol where we are gonna put a neutral score marker just to eliminate those areas for certain player counts. So go ahead and take the neutral score markers, which are gray, and you can go ahead and cover up those spaces. And that will complete the setup of the game. Next, we're gonna go over the sequence of play. There's four different things we can do on our turn. Now, the player aid has this detailed with iconography that's really easy to follow once you understand what it all stands for. So let's go through that. Just to give you an overview, the first thing every player has to do is move a rat. The second thing is collect resources. Now the third and fourth are optional, and they kind of depend on where you end up at the end of your turn. So the third thing is to go shopping, and the fourth thing is to build or donate cheese. So let's break down what each of these entails. Let's talk about moving rats. Every player will have two different options when it comes to moving your rat. You can advance one of your rats one to five spaces along the junkyard path. The other option is you could advance two to four of your rats for one to three spaces, as long as they all end up on different spaces of the same color. So when the game begins, we actually only have two rats to move. The other two rats should be in the nursery, and we're gonna have to unlock them at a later stage in the game. As great as it can be to move multiple rats each turn, it can be a little tricky to make sure they all end up on different spaces as well as the same color. So you're really gonna have to have some strategic thinking when deciding how and when to move your rats. So let's talk about some rules for movement. You must always move your rats in the direction towards the rocket. They can never go backward. You can never have two of your rats in the same space, except of course for the start space. And if you choose option B, which is moving two to four of your rats one to three spaces, you may move a rat away from a space first before moving another rat into that space. Lastly, the final junkyard space, which is the launch pad, has all five colors. If one of your rats ends its movement on this space, you can choose which color you want the space to be. Because remember, all of your rats have to end their turn on the same color if you're moving multiple rats. If you end your rat's movement in a space that already has a player's rat, you must give that player one cheese. If there are several players in that space, you have to give each player a cheese. So be mindful about where you land. And hey, if they land in your space, then they have to pay you a cheese on their turn. First rat has a really interesting element with their moldy cheese. So let's say that you wanna take a turn and land where another rat is, knowing you have to pay them a cheese, but you don't have any cheese to pay them. Well, that's where moldy cheese comes in. You can kind of like take this cheese or this debt on. So when you take a moldy cheese, it will give you three cheese, but you also retain this negative two on your score for the rest of the game. There's no way to get rid of moldy cheese once you take it. So you may only take as much moldy cheese as is necessary to give to other players. You may never take moldy cheese for any other reason. So it's simply there to help you on this junkyard track so that if you owe cheese to other players because you've landed on their space, it kind of allows you to do that. Just remember, every time you do this, you will lose two points for each moldy cheese you have at the end of the game, and there's no way to get rid of these. There's also some unique movements on the board called short Cuts. So there's various pipes that provide you shortcuts in the junkyard. A shortcut always connects two spaces, but doesn't count as a space itself. If you want to use a shortcut during your movement, you must hand in the building material depicted on the shortcut to the general supply. So let's say that I was here in this green space with the baking soda. If I'm wanting to move to this white space with the three apple cores, I can take the shortcut by paying one tin can. And this will actually only cost me three movements. Then 
That basically covers all the movement options of first rat. Now let's go to step two of your turn, which is collect resources. So we know we have to move our rats to these spaces and each space is gonna dictate the resource that we acquire. Now these resources will later be handed in to build different parts of the equipment needed to get into space. So let's break down what each color space is gonna get you. Yellow spaces are going to get you cheese, anywhere from one to four. Green and orange spaces are gonna get you vinegar bottle, tin can, baking soda, calculator. Blue spaces are going to advance your light string marker on the light string space. You're gonna be able to advance anywhere from one to four spaces depending on the blue space you land. Now we haven't really talked about why it's beneficial to move up on the light string, so let's do that right now. When Advancing your light string marker, each light bulb or construction light on the light string represents one space. There is no limit for the number of light string markers in a space, so multiple players can be on the same space. So what does this mean? In later rounds, your yield for any space your light string marker has reached or passed will increase by one. So if my light string marker is here, then instead of getting one baking soda when I land here, I will get two. Once your light string marker reaches or passes any of the three large construction lights, you get to place a score marker on the construction light score track. So this light string path can really help you earn more resources as well as help you with end of game scoring. Now let's talk about the last space, which is your white space. So these white spaces have apple cores on them. Basically, each apple core allows you to move one space along the rat burrow path. So if I have four apple cores showing on my white space, then I can move my rat burrow marker four spaces. It can only move clockwise around the rat burrow path. Whenever you reach an intersection, you must decide which way you'll continue your movement. Typically, that'll be up or to the left. Three spaces in the rat burrow provide you with a reward. The first one is the library. You can take one comic from the library and place it face up in front of you. Comics provide various advantages for the rest of the game. The next space here in the middle is the nursery. This is where you may raise one new rat for every time you land here. You'll simply take your rat out of the nursery and place it in the start space on the junkyard. Lastly is the stored food area. Here is just a simple standard scoring track. Once you land here, you can put your score marker on the next available score track space. Now keep in mind, it is possible to gain rewards several times in one turn if you've collected enough apple cores. You can just keep going around and around and around and I guess burrowing as long as you want. Now let's talk about the final space, which is the launch pad. This kind of has a wild space feel to it, but let's talk about what you get when you arrive at this space. So basically when you've reached the end of the junkyard path, congratulations, your rat has become a ratronaut and it's part of the crew that's gonna fly to the cheese moon. Way to go. You're gonna take your rat and put it in the leftmost free space of the ratronaut score track. You also immediately gain one reward. You can either take one reward from the general supply, which is worth three points at the end of the game, or raise one of your rats from the nursery and place it in the start space on the junkyard path. Of course, once your rat's on the Ratronaut score track, you can no longer move it. He's stuck there on his way to space. Also keep in mind, you can only choose the award if you still have at least one of your rats on the junkyard path, or if you have just placed your fourth and final rat into the rocket. Otherwise, you will no longer be able to move a rat for the rest of the game. All right, we've broke down how to move your rat and then how to collect resources. So let's talk about shopping. Yeah, this is an optional choice you have and there's three different places that you can go shopping for an item and you have to be in a specific space in order to do so. We can shop with Harry the Hamster, Zippy the Frog or Mad Cap Crow. 
So this shopping is so thematic and I absolutely love it because you have two options here. You can shop and you can pay the requested amount of the vendor, depending on where you're at, uh, and get your item. It's as simple as that, right? So for instance, if I want to go to Harry Hamster's booth, he is saying here that I have to pay six cheese, I pay my six cheese, and I get to pick the item of my choice. Now the other option here, which I think is so thematic, is you can steal. I mean, that's really what rats do when it comes down to it, right? They come in our house and they steal. So you can take one item of your choice from the corresponding booth, and then you have to return that rat that stole something to the start space on the junkyard path. This can actually be really strategic. Let's say you've moved up on your light string path. Maybe you're gonna be able to get so many resources by doing this. Now remember, the only way to shop is if you moved your rat to that space that turn. That is the only way. You can't like hang out in that space and never move that rat. You only get a shop if they actively moved there and ended their turn there. Well, that really breaks down the shopping, which again is optional because it really depends on if you've landed in a space where you can shop. So let's go on to build and donate cheese. This is step four, it's also optional. So during the build phase, you can build one or more parts for the rocket. That's right, you don't just have to limit yourself to one. If you have been like accruing all these resources, cash them in and start building some stuff. So let's break down what you can build. The iconography on the board makes it super easy to know what to do. So let's say we wanna build a cockpit. We are gonna have to hand in two calculators and one tin can. Then we can take our scoring tracker and go ahead and put it in the leftmost space. If we wanna build something for our cargo bay, we're gonna hand in three baking soda and two tin can. And do the same thing by taking our score tracking cube and placing it in the leftmost space. We also can build our thruster, which is five vinegar bottles and two baking sodas. So during this building step, you can build as many parts as you want and even make duplicate parts, trying to really monopolize maybe certain scoring objectives or points on these score tracks. Now you're also gonna find a score track that says complete rocket. The way that you get to put your score marker here is if you have built one cockpit, one cargo bay, and one thruster. Once you've completed one of each of those, you're able to put your score marker on the complete rocket scoring track. So for example, you can see here, I've built a cockpit, a cargo bay, and a thruster. So now I have all the parts needed to complete my rocket and I can put my score marker in the leftmost available space. So that takes care of the things we can build. Now let's look at donate cheese. In order to score on the Donate Cheese Score Tracker, you have to hand in 10 cheese to the general supply. It's as easy as that. Take your score marker and put it on the score track. Leftmost empty space, of course. Just like with building, you can donate as many times as you'd like and score as many times on the score track as you have cheese available to do so. So let's talk about these score tracks. Each score track has five spaces. Depending on the number of players, some spaces will be covered as we did in the setup with the neutral markers. When you place a score track, place one of your score markers in the free space furthest to the left, which is obviously the free space with the most points. So of course that's where you'd wanna put it. So you can put one score marker in each of the first four spaces to the left. And then this last fifth space on the right any number of score markers can go here. So basically once those first four are filled, we're just gonna start stacking score markers on this last area to earn points at the end of the game. So again, just to break down the different areas that you can score on score tracks, we have our rocket construction area. This has three items you can build, the cockpit, the cargo bay, and the thruster. Once you have one score marker in each of these, you can also put one in the complete rocket score tracker. We have a donate cheese option where you can hand in 10 cheese and put your score marker on the score tracker for this. We also have the construction lights. There's three places throughout the board where when you're moving your light string marker on the light strings, you are gonna run across these anytime you do you're gonna put your score marker on this score tracker. We also have our stored food. Remember, this is way down in the burrow. 
So anytime your burrowing rat goes across this stored food area, you can put a score marker here as well. Of course, we have our Ratronaut score tracker. Remember, this is when your rat reaches the launch pad. You're actually not gonna put a score marker here, but you're gonna place your rat on the furthest left space. All right, guys, we have finally reached how in the world do you trigger the end of game for first rat? I know you're having so much fun and you don't even want to think about how this game ends, but you know what? Let's go ahead just so you know for future reference. The game ends in one of two ways. A player moves their fourth rat into the launch pad. In this case, the game ends at the end of the current round, just so all players have the same number of turns. Now the other option is a player places their eighth score marker. In this case, you're gonna finish the current round and then play one additional round. So remember we set aside that ninth and 10th score marker? Well, this is why, you can still use those, but we wanna keep the eight score markers set aside so we know when to trigger that end of game scoring. So once the game is finished, we have these great score pads where you are gonna total up and figure out who was the best rat family. So we're gonna score up our eight different score tracks. We're gonna enter the total points for any bottle caps we've collected. You're gonna wanna add in your three point awards. And also, don't forget about your moldy cheese. That's gonna be minus two for each you acquired during the game. You're also gonna gain one point for every four of the following resources you have left in any combination. So remember, that's our vinegar bottles, baking soda, tin cans, calculators, and cheese. Of course, the player with the most points wins. Now, let's quickly talk about the variable setup. On the back side of the board, the game actually comes with all these different tiles where you can manipulate and move resources around and also the score tracks are going to change. There is so much replayability and variety in this game. It is just so addicting and so fun. This game also comes with a solo play. I love it. This hits everything for me. It's a great family game full of so many options and strategies on how to win and it comes with a solo variant. So for the solo variant, you actually use a deck of cards and you are kind of racing with Greg, who is the solo variant player. And on the back of the rule book, you can find solo challenges where you can kind of track your progression as you play the solo version of the game. I love this game so much. I think it is such a great family game. It offers that solo variant, so much replayability, and a great game just for adults. It doesn't even need to just be family. Adults will have a fun time getting this out and figuring out their best strategy. There's so much variety on that back side of the board. I loved reviewing this game and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes